Now the other thing that's really important to note here is there are two kinds of two paths that are going to be talked about in this surah. The path of Allah, the, the right way, right? And the path of other than Allah. You could follow a path which you follow Allah's dictates and that's going to be a struggle. Or you could follow what you want to do. But guess what? Both of them are a struggle. Neither of them is easy. You think one is easy and one is hard, but in both of them there's trouble. Both of them will lead you to stress and difficulty and labor, etc. Right? None of these paths are easy. So might as well struggle for something that will lead you to something better in the end. Right? People run away from the commandments of Allah thinking it's going to bring difficulty to life. Even Muslims today, or even you know, non-Muslims for sure. For example, we find non-Muslims making comments that are close to Islam. That are close to Islam. Making comments like, yeah, I really like your religion, it makes a lot of sense, but it asks too much of me. It's asking me to change too many things. Right? It's too hard. So the way they're doing things, they feel this is ease, and the way Islam is telling them to do things is difficulty. Allah's commandments are difficulty. In Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ Allah intends to lighten your burden from you. Meaning your life is full of burdens, you follow His commandments, and it will become light. And this is in the context of ahkam, rulings that Allah passes in the surah. Allah knows what's better for you. The medicine tastes sour, but it's good for you. It brings ease and comfort and relaxation to you. So we'll, we'll talk more about that as the surah continues, inshallah ta'ala. So, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ So why would Allah say, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ There's some other heavy burden, heavy exhaustion that the human being suffers from. And uh, for example, we find Thanaullah uh, Panipati commenting in Tafsir Madhari, he says, also Mufti Muhammad Shafi said this, he said perhaps that this labor is the covenant that Allah put upon every human being before they even got here to acknowledge Allah as their, as their Rabb. That, that responsibility, that burden is upon them and as long as they deny that responsibility, they have troubles in life. And when they accept that responsibility, they have troubles, but the kinds of troubles that will elevate their status. That will elevate their status. So, Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Finally, Al-Alusi rahimahullah in Ruh al-Ma'ani says something really beautiful and powerful about this ayah. He says, wa fi ta'kid. كون الإنسان في كبد بالقسم تثبيت لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. By Allah emphasizing in this oath that human beings are meant for struggle, they can't escape it. In it there is a strengthening, and in it there is a confirming and a patting on the back of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. He's being told, you are struggling for this cause, but you're not the only one. Struggle is going on all around. So the fact that struggle is taking place isn't something unique to you, it is part of human legacy. So be, you know, it's okay, they're going through a struggle too, you're not the only one. And this is, this is what's meant to happen, this is the qadr of Allah. And when he learns sallallahu alayhi wa that something is from the qadr of Allah, he is satisfied. He reaches that itma'inan that we spoke about in the very beginning. So now Allah Azza wa Jalla says, أَيَحْسَبُ أَلَّنْ يَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ أَحَدٍ This human being is created in struggle. And this, Allah mentions the psychological conflict of the human being. Probably many of you can identify with the psychological conflict. On the, on the inside there is this stress and this worry. Maybe this worry about, is about your finances. Maybe this worry is about you know, your, your reputation among people. Maybe this, you know, it's about your education, etc. Whatever it may be. But the human being is stressed out and he's in this kabat, in this labor. Constantly exhausted in this labor. But at the same time, he has to maintain this reputation of strength. And you know, I'm not weak, I don't need any help. And nobody's like, I'm number one, that sort of thing. On the outside. You have a lot of this, it's manifest in our society most clearly among celebrities. Like musicians and artists and things like that. You know, on the outside, I'm number one, and you know, this and that, and on the inside, they're overdosing on pills and killing themselves. In like, and they're depressed, and they have suffer from severe psychological trauma. But on the outside, these are the most confident people, and they want, you know, everybody should be like me, and everybody wants to be like me sort of thing. So there's this conflict. Now look at this, the other side. On the one hand, the human being is created in struggle, and on the other, at the same time, أَيَحْسَبُ أَلَّنْ يَقْدِرَ عَلَيْهِ أَحَدْ has he assumed that no one will have control over him whatsoever? It is only upon him alayhi qaddamat. Right? This, this jar wa majroor, this prepositional phrase has been put early, which means it is only upon him that not a single one will have any control over. He is special. He's gonna be above the law. He's never gonna get caught. He thinks he's the one who's above everything else. And this attitude we find in, in little ways and big ways among human beings.